Hi guys, welcome back to Rock Fabulous 40s and today I'm going to do something just a little bit different. I'm going to talk about makeup, not necessarily products, but maybe techniques that I struggle with. And this was an idea that came to me by a comment that one of my viewers made on one of my videos. And she had made a comment on my video and it just got my brain thinking that, so what are the makeup struggles that I have? So that's what I'm going to talk about today. I have five makeup struggles that I want to share with you guys. Now, some of them I have kind of, some of them I have figured out how to deal with that struggle or get past it. There is maybe one or two where I'm still trying to fight that struggle. So if you guys have any makeup struggles that you struggle with, leave a comment down below. Let us know what those are. Also, if any of the struggles that I am having that I have not quite figured out how to work with, if you guys have any tips for me, also leave those down below too because there are some things here that I am having some issues with and I just can't quite get them figured out. Maybe you guys can help. All right, so we're going to jump right in. I have five things. So, okay, I'm going to start with the struggle that I would consider... The easiest struggle, I guess, or not necessarily the easiest struggle, but the easiest thing it was for me to fix. That's what I'm going to start with. And for me, one of the easiest things for me to fix was my foundation creeping into these lines right here. And I got to a point, guys, don't look at my hair. My hair, I'm struggling today with my hair. So there's a hair struggle for you. Anyway, so I had gotten to a point to where no matter what primer I used, no matter what foundation I used, no matter how little of the foundation I used, I was having struggles with it within a couple of hours creeping into these lines right here. So, you know, halfway through the evening, I'd go look in the mirror and I'd have these little lines and, you know, I could do this and press them in and get rid of them and they wouldn't come back for the rest of the night. But how do I keep that from happening in the first place? So what I have figured out and what I have been doing over the past year is I will apply my foundation with a brush typically. Now I'll do BB creams and CC creams with my um, beauty sponge, which is fine. But with foundations, I'll typically apply with a brush and then I will take my damp beauty blender sponge and press that foundation into the skin. Make sure I get it all pressed. I mean, I will take that sponge and I will press it almost as hard as I can on my face and just kind of roll it so that foundation really gets pressed into the skin really, really well. Once I have done that and I am happy with how the foundation is looking on my skin, before I move on to any other makeup step, I will sit there for about two minutes and let the foundation just kind of dry down. Then I will take a paper towel and I will press the paper towel all over my face. Not wipe, press it all over your face. Press it into where you might have some lines. You know, just press it in and that gets all the excess foundation off. Now since I have been doing that, I have not had any foundation creepage into any of my lines. I can use some of the worst foundations out there. If I do that technique, even some of the worst foundations don't creep over there. So that that was like just a game changing thing for me is, you know, brush apply, smush it in with the sponge, paper towel to get off the excess. Works great. Okay, so my number two struggle has to do with the lips. And I have an issue where if I line my lips or if I put lipstick on and I put lipstick here in the corners, what happens is this little area right here, right there, gets overdrawn and then it just looks like I tried too hard on my lipstick and then it looks messy. So I hate having lipstick or lip liner right here, even though my lip goes right here. It just, it looks funny. It's just the shape of my lips, I guess. So I have a hard time putting stuff in the corners. But yet, if I don't put lip liner or lipstick in the corners right here, I feel that looks kind of dumb also. I want to have lip gloss, lipstick, lip liner, whatever, on the whole lip and not leave the corners blank, you know what I mean? And not have like this just kind of looking overdrawn and messy. So what I have found to fix this issue is 
always use a lip liner. Whether or not you're using a gloss, a lipstick, a liquid lipstick, use a lip liner. But the lip liner type that you use, I feel, is very important too. So if you guys are also having this struggle, as much as I love these automatic lip liners, I do struggle with these. So these automatic lip liners, okay, like this one from Rimmel. This is East End Snob, which is one of my absolute favorites. But if you look, the tip is not at a sharp point. So what happens is when I'm drawing right here, here, I'll give you an example. Do you see? I don't know if you can tell. Here, I'm going to zoom you guys in. My lip actually goes right there, but do you see like how messy that looks? And it looks overdrawn. And I just, I just don't like how that looks. So it's just, to me, that's just, oh, I can't stand that, even though that is part of my lip. It just, to me, just looks horrid. Off with it. So, you know, that's a pretty big struggle of mine right there, is it just, uh, it just gets right there and it just overdraws my, it, it looks like it overdraws my lip and then it looks like a mess. I just freaking hate it. And that's what these automatic liners do. Even though this one is my absolute favorite shade is this East End Snob. And I love this Wet n Wild one. But same problem, the tip is not sharp enough so it actually draws outside or it draws into the little area there that I don't like. So all of the automatic pencils do that. But if I use pencils that I have to sharpen, Okay, if I use pencils that I have to sharpen and I can get a really nice sharp pointy tip, I don't have that issue. Um, let's try, here, I'll use a red so it kind of stands out here. Okay, do you see here? I wanted it to stand out so you could see it. Do you see how I get a much more precise line because I'm working with a tip that's a little pointy and it's not looking like it's overdrawing that portion of my lip. You guys see that? That's how I get over that particular struggle of the messy look in the corners is not using, well, is always using lip liner no matter what I'm putting on my lips, but not using automatic liners. I use liners that I have to sharpen because they give me a nice tip that gives me really good control right here and it doesn't make it look overdrawn and just icky. So some of the ones that I really enjoy are the MAC lip liners, which are, you know, you sharpen them. And I love the MAC lip liners. The Milani lip liners are awesome. Okay, you sharpen these as well. Um, and then also the Urban Decay lip liners are also pretty awesome. So those are some of my favorite lip liners to use. And the automatic ones, I just kind of set off to the side and I just don't really reach for them anymore. All right, I gotta take this red off now. So my next struggle has to do with eyeliner and it's eyeliner wings or making my eyeliner stay put in the waterline. And I really have to be careful which eyeliners I put in my waterline anyway because there are some eyeliners that put this funky film on my contact lens and it blinds me. I made a whole entire video over it. I'll leave a link for that video down below if you guys are interested. Um, but I do have issues with liner in my waterline. Other than some liners leaving film, the liners that don't leave a film on my contacts typically don't stay on my waterline. They creep over into the corner or they just kind of fade off throughout the day. So one of the ways that I fix that is whatever color liner I'm using in my waterline, I will get a corresponding shade of eyeshadow and I will take a little eyeliner brush and I will dip it into the eyeshadow. Like for example, this little Wet n Wild here, this is just the black one. I'll dip a little brush into the eyeshadow and I will press it down along the waterline and that will keep my eyeliner on all day long without it moving, without it smudging. So it's almost like you put the eyeliner down in the waterline and then you set it with the corresponding eyeshadow shade. So that's been working great for me. So the wing liner, I'm also going to bunch into this as well because it all just has to do with eyeliner. I don't do a whole lot of wing liner and the reason I don't is because my eyes, 
I can't get them right. I guess it's the shape of my eyes. I don't know. I can't get them right. I get one eye fatter than the other, one eye longer than the other, and it just looks stupid. But they're on me anyway. It looks stupid. Some people it looks great on, but because I can't do it right, it just looks dumb on me. So there are some times when I do want to wear winged liner. For example, um, last year we dressed up for Halloween and I dressed up as a pinup and I wanted a really prominent winged liner. So how I do a winged liner, which is a huge struggle for me, this is how I do it. All right, first thing that I do is I make sure I have an eyeliner that works great, that I love, that doesn't drift off into the little crinkles there in your lid. You don't want your eyeliner to vein, so you want to make sure you're getting a really, really good liner, number one. Number two, there are certain tools that you can use. like. I picked this up from Real Techniques. This is a little eyeliner stencil. It looks like a little guitar pick. You know what, guys? You could probably even just use a guitar pick if you have a guitar pick. But you can take this and you can even it up right here, like so, and you have a stencil to draw your wing. Or you can take the side of it and do that as well and draw your wing. Okay? That works great. This little $3 tool from e.l.f works great. You can take it, pop it right under the eye like that, and draw your wing. This is also a shadow shield, guys. It will catch eyeshadow fallout while you're doing your makeup as well. It's a great tool. So, you know, those are a couple of things that you can do to help with winged eyeliner. Some people do tape. Um, there's been times I've taken a brush, and I'll just put a brush right there and just use the brush as my guide. But, you also, like I said, want to make sure that you are using an eyeliner that does not feather. And a couple of my favorite liquid liners, I typically like the ones with the brushes. So one of my favorites is the um, Clinique, what are you called? This, the Clinique Pretty Easy Liner is what it's called. It is a pen style, but it is a brush tip. It's a very, very fine brush tip. It is a great liner. It does not um, vein on my eyelids. It doesn't feather out. Very, very good liner. Another one that I really, really enjoy. This one's quite a bit more expensive, though. This one's from Lancome, and it's called the Art Liner. This guy right here. I love this. Now, this is not a brush tip. This is actually a silicone tip, and it's got a very, very fine point on it, but the tip is very, very flexible, almost like a brush would be. Look how black that is. So, I mean, it's a very, very flexible. You guys see how it's just even though it's not a brush. It's just a little silicone little tip there. So this is also one of my favorites. A little more expensive than the Clinique, but it's pretty good. Um, also along with that winged eyeliner, one of the things I also use that helps quite a bit is this e.l.f. makeup remover pen right here. If I do screw it up, if I do make a mistake, I can just take the makeup remover pen and just kind of clean it up. So you could also use a Q-tip dipped in um, makeup remover, that'll do it too. But I mean, this is only a couple of dollars and you can get it just anywhere Elf is sold. So that's a couple of ways that I do my winged liner and I can get them pretty even. And yeah, it works out pretty well when I use those tools. All right, so my next struggle is eyeshadow. Um, I have an issue with my eyeshadow and maybe some of you guys can help me out with this. Um, I have not figured out a complete way to fix it yet. I can work with it, but I haven't figured out a complete way to fix it. My eyes are shaped in such a way that when I, I'm a little hooded, not bad, just a little bit, okay? You can see just a little bit of droopiness there. So I like to add a transition shade above the crease, just so you can see it right above. But my eye is shaped in a way such when I add that eyeshadow to right above the crease, it creates this really weird triangle shape right here. So, you guys see it? Especially when I lift my eyes, you can see it. It goes whoop, whoop. Do you guys see that? Just like that. Do you guys, uh, you can see the transition shade just triangle up right there. I have tried just doing straight across with my brush and not curving it. It doesn't help. It still does that little whoop triangle thing. I have tried bringing the brush up higher, closer to my brow, and just kind of angling it down. 
that looks weird on my eye shape. So how I get around that, and like I said, I haven't fixed it completely, but how I get around that is I will take a pencil brush like this, and this is just a Sedona Lace, what are you, 904, it's just a pencil brush. I will put my transition shade on the pencil brush, and I will draw it just like this. I will make a line, I mean literally a straight line, just like that. Then I will take my fluffy brush with nothing on it, and I will blend that in. And I will go ahead and do my windshield wiper motions while I'm blending that in. And what it does is it keeps the angle just a little bit more straight. Yes, it still goes up into that funky triangle right there. But it keeps it a little more straight and not so strange looking. But if you guys have like funky eye shape like I do, I don't even know what you would call this eye shape. It's not exactly almond. It's not exactly, I don't know. Um, I don't know what you would call it. But if you guys have any tips on how to get your transition shade to show when you have hooded eyes without it doing this little triangle-y thing right there, leave a comment down below and let me know because that is one that I am totally struggling with, that I still struggle with, that yes, I can work with, but I still get that struggle. All right, the biggest thing I struggle with, the biggest and the thing that makes me the most aggravated that I struggle with, and I still haven't found a complete fix for it, I can work with it again, but not a complete fix, is my under eye circles. And if you guys have any tips for under eye circles, you guys tell me what they are, but I'm gonna tell you what I do. And you can see, uh, my circles are still showing. You see that? I have used corrector and I have used concealer, and my circles are still showing. No matter what I do, I can't get rid of those damn dark circles. They just continue to show. Now, I do have a little bit of a bag right here. Not bad, just a little bit of puffiness there. So, what I do to at least help combat this, because I have tried many, many ways, and if you guys are around my age, and I am in my late 40s or even older, you guys know that as we get older, we get some puffiness, we get some crepiness, but yet we also get get those really dark circles under there. And we want to be able to cover the circles, but we don't want to put too much product under there or too much of a full coverage product under there because those tend to make us look more crepey, more wrinkly under the eyes, and it just looks cakey, and I just don't like using a ton of product under the eye. So one way I have been trying to combat the dark circles, even though I still haven't got it figured out completely, but my under eyes don't look cakey, that's a plus, is I start with a color corrector. So I will do my foundation. I'll get my foundation on. And I will do a color corrector. Two of my favorites are, and I still, I still have this old jar of it, is the uh, Benefit Erase Paste. I use this all the time, but I only need so little of it that I still have the original jar here. And I also use the Bobbi Brown uh, Corrector in Peach Bisque right here. And one other one that I used to absolutely hate with a passion, absolutely hated it, thought it was the worst product in the world, I tried it again and I'm starting to use it more because it works. And this is a drugstore one. This is the Master Camo by Maybelline, and it is in, I believe this is the peach one. This is the um, apricot one, and again, it's the Master Camo from Maybelline. And this has got like a funky little tip to it here, and it looks really, really dark. That was one of the reasons why I hated it, because it was so dark, and I had to use so much concealer to try to cover it up. But I have learned how to use this, and I've learned how to like it. I never apply this with the tips. I never apply any of my concealers with the tips that come on the actual concealers or correctors. I use my own brush and typically what I'll do is I'll use a very very small headed brush. Um, this one from Moda, this is the Moda Prismatic Collection, you can get it at Walmart. It's got a very small but very dense tip here which works great. I will take that color corrector, oh by the way another brush right here, I don't know what this is called, it came in a boxy charm, but it is a very very small dense tipped brush. So any brush like that will work. But I'll take the color corrector, I'll get some on this little sponge tip here, and I will take it on this brush, 
not much, just a little bit, and then I will apply it to the area I need it. So when I am applying, I only apply to where I see the blue, the blue color, the shadow. So I only go right here. That's it. Not much. And I just kind of pat it, pat it, pat it, pat it, pat it till it's blended in. So I will do that with this. I will do it with my erase paste and also my Bobbi Brown and Peach Bisque. So I'll apply them with a little brush, only get it right into the um, blue spot where I need it. Once I have done that and I've got it all blended in, then I will take my concealer, which again, I never ever ever apply my concealers with the, the uh, applicators that come with them. I just, I don't. It's way too much. It applies way too much. But two of my favorite concealers to use are the IT Cosmetics CC Plus I, this guy right here, and I am in the color, um, well, today I use the color light. I probably should be a medium, but so this is the IT Cosmetics CC I, and it has got the little cooling applicator on it, but again, I don't use the applicator. And I also really like the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind right here, and this has got the little spongy tip applicator as well and again I don't apply it with the sponge tip. So what I'll do is I will take a bit of the product and I will put it on the back of my hand like that. I know that looks like a lot but I'll put it on the back of my hand and then I will take my finger and I'll dip my finger in there and then just place it just right over where I put the color corrector. That's it. Just right over. Not very much at all. Just kind of dab it in. Then I'll take my makeup sponge, my beauty blender, and blend it in the rest of the way. Now once I have done that, I do have to set my under eyes because now I've got color corrector and I've got concealer on my under eyes and now I'm going to top it with a powder and yes that sounds like a lot of work but I use more, uh, there's a couple of powders that I really really love to use for the under eye and one of them is drugstore, one of them is this Milani Prep Set and Glow. I used to hate this. I used to absolutely hate this powder. But the more I started using it, the more I started really, really liking it. So I'll dip a brush in here and I will apply it to my under eye. And it does have a little tiny bit of glow so it doesn't make your under eye look so cakey. Um, a couple of the other ones I really do like, and this kind of has a scent to it too. It's kind of cinnamon smelling to me. A couple of the other ones that I really like, one of my favorites is the uh, Clinique Invisible Blend Loose Powder. Works great. And also the IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores Powder, the translucent, works great as well. I find that both of these kind of disguise some of the lines. And this one kind of does a little bit as well. Not as well as these, but it, this one also gives you a little bit of illumination under there. Once I have applied a light amount of powder, and I mean I'll swirl my swirl my brush in, apply it, if there's any excess I dust it off, then I take my beauty blender and press it under my eye to make sure that powder is pressed in and doesn't look cakey and that's how I get rid of any cakiness that my under eyes look like. Otherwise I look crepey under there and I just don't like that. So so far that is the best way I have figured out how to get rid of my dark circles but like I said as you guys will see they are not completely gone. So if you guys, like I said, have any tips or tricks on how to really disguise those dark circles without older under eyes looking crepey and liney and caked up with makeup, please let me know because I'm, being, I'm able to work with it, but I'm just not completely getting it covered up and it's making me nuts. It just makes me so angry. <laughs> okay guys, so that is my top five list on makeup that I struggle with, makeup how-tos um, that I struggle with. So if you guys, like I said earlier, have any makeup struggles that you are dealing with, leave a comment down below. Maybe somebody out there can give some tips and tricks to you on maybe things you can try, maybe things that might help. If you guys have any like ideas on how I can work with my struggles, especially those stupid dark under eye circles, or you know, even with my funky angled eyeshadow issues I've got going on, leave a comment down below and give me some of your ideas as well because I'll try them out and see if they work. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you somewhat found it useful, helpful, something. If you did, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Also guys, hit the bell down there. If you hit the bell down under this video, 
you will be notified of videos that I have uploaded, as well as if you hit the subscribe button under there, you too can rock your fabulous 40s, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.